All right, beautiful people. Sorry about that. Let me tell you, when I, when I woke up this morning, I was like, why did I tell them 6.15? I'm not getting up. I debated for a few minutes before I said I ain't getting up. I was like, you know what? It is Martin Luther King's birthday was being celebrated today. Everything closed. I was like, most of them probably off. I'm going to just let them sleep in, right? So I wanted y'all to have that, have that feeling that students feel when they walk into class that day and they see the teacher come in pushing that big block television like, yes, movie day, right? So you kind of get like that same feeling when you get a chance to sleep in. Yeah. Jamil, Jamil uh, left me a message on the post. She said, got me waking up at 6.15 in the morning. I was like, girl, I hope you went back to sleep because I sure did. But anyway, beautiful people, happy Monday. Happy Monday. Let's go ahead and get this started. I'm just, uh, I was just about to say, let me apologize in advance because it's an extended weekend. My grandbabies are still here, right? So just be prepared for possible shenanigans right yeah back back up back up thank you little baby all right y'all happy monday it is january the 16th 2023 day I guess what I didn't write. it is day 316 of year four of reading through the books of the law and the prophets and of the four year consecutive day count day 1335 and today we're gonna pick back up in a Romance of the Red Star, which is another name for a waspy under a different publisher, publishing group. Um, and pick back up on page seven. We're going to read like that next chapter. Maybe two. Maybe two. Then we're going to hop back over here to the little detour field guide to the spirit world gave us after the reincarnation hoax chapter over here to delusions and science and spirituality chapter seven which is reincarnation a more in-depth study that susan b martinez did so we'll read a little bit more this out of all that right that was a mouthful all right beautiful people father we thank you for days that the teacher walk in with the big block tv all right beautiful people everybody been that greetings take but hey girl hey she brew yeah we good now sis and then uh, so my 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 husband, my oldest son still had to go to work today because he he working for the shipyards now, right? So he still had to go to work today, and him and his his uh his wife got this little arrangement, you know, where they figuring out what they doing with their lives. They got this arrangement where, you know, anyway, the weekends the grandbaby's here, but if a holiday falls in within there, um. The grandbabies is having an extended weekend here as well. So, I mean, which is no problem. Till I realized that uh, I might be the default babysitter. L listen, let me tell you something. Just because I'm a grandmama, don't mean I'm going to watch your kids for you. Right? I love them to life. They're my babies. But just because I hold the title of grandma, don't mean I'm going to watch them. I still got kids. They age. Right? We both need babysitters, <laughs> bruh. <laughs> Listen, but no, real thing, no problem. But sometimes, no, I, I want them to realize just because we are grandma, granddaddy, you just call us cookie and pop pop. Don't think that relegates us to babysitting duties because it does not. We leave all y'all in this house, of course, with the older children, <laughs> their parents or whatever, and we rolling out, right? Matter of fact, ours is old enough to watch themselves to a certain extent. But anyway, um, so, yeah. Everybody else hanging out in the background. Shalom, mom, shalom, shalom. Rita, Dar, what's good, fam? Derek, shalom, shalom. Auntie, hey, girl, hey. Elijah, bless up. All right, beautiful people. Let's go ahead and get started. Tigba said, I just spent the weekend with my first and only grandchild, and I'm that kind of granny, and I'll watch Precious forever. Enjoy that time. <laughs> Enjoy that time. Like we look, we just pulling our lives together. Shoot, we want to travel and see stuff. And I think, look, listen. I think here's one of the things. One of the reasons my husband's like, well, listen, let's have no baby. I'm like, absolutely not. We already got six, right? It, it would have been seven, but we already got six, right? And so he said, well. 
want to buy you a house. Can we have another baby? I said, I'll think about it. How soon are you going to give me the house? <laughs> right. And then we got the house. But listen, the Lord heard my prayer. I'm like, Father, I'm getting older. I ain't trying to have children nursing on me until I'm 87 years old. Listen, so the day we moved in, our oldest son moved back in too. And his churn every weekend, right? So every weekend they showing up. And his baby is a little bit younger, right? Jace, his oldest one, is six, which is our youngest age, Bella, right? But then you got the, the two-year-old baby now. And she's still getting into everything. And then you got Jackson, who's Jackson is four. He do her. He getting better, right? But that 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 two and that four year old, they just they always in a something, right? So he been getting a good dose of them for the last six months, and he has thoroughly reconsidered having another baby at this point, right? And especially when I end up watching them on the weekend, and the two year old, she's she's potty training. But she don't, when she don't quite make it there to do the number two, who got to clean it up? Absolutely. Now, you know how long it's been since we had to change the diaper? Like, don't listen. I don't care that I'm their grandma. Uh-uh, no. Call me, first of all, call me Cookie. Don't call me Grandma. I'm too young for that. <laughs> no, seriously. All jokes aside, though, like, for real. I'm just, I just feel like I'm out of, like, I care for your baby. I, I love them, right? But... Um, I, I feel them grandparents that's like, you know, you can come, but we're going to give them right back to y'all. Go ahead and get away from here. We'll see y'all in a couple weeks now. Get away from my house. <laughs> but they live with us. So it's like, we don't get the opportunity to do that. Things like, you and your kids getting on my nerves. We ain't got a chance to miss none of y'all. How long is it going to be before you get your place? Mm-hmm. Yep. We got a calendar every day. We marking it all like we in jail. <laughs> I'm joking. I love them though, but seriously, I ain't trying to have no more babies. Prince, shalom, shalom. Take me to have my only child. Have one child and Precious might be an only child too. Okay, see, yeah, that's, I get that. That's a whole different type of scenario and dynamic. Me, in my family, nowhere. Extended and close. There is not a single birth child. I grew up with a gaggle of brethren, with a gaggle of my cousins living with us, and a gaggle of them living in the same neighborhood. It ain't never been one of us. And all of us then had gaggles of kids. We don't know what the single life is like. Like, we don't even know what that's all about. We heard, we heard stories, <laughs> but we can't relate. <laughs> We can't relate, none of us, not every one of us, multiple generations back <laughs> and possibly coming forward as well, right? That's all we know. All we know is abundance. <laughs> all right, y'all, let's get started. We got the book. Okay, all right, y'all. I think we're just going to read one chapter so we can read a little bit more of this real Girl, what you want? What? My cookie. What? Kiki. Kiki, come get cookie. Yeah, I'm cookie. She said, this is my cookie. This is cookie. <laughs> Alicia, hey girl, hey. All right, y'all. Chapter four on page seven of Romance to the Red Star. Um... Yeah, if you got the PDF and you're looking at the PDF, the actual number on the page is seven. I can't even tell you in the PDF document because I am not looking at that anymore. So page seven, chapter four. Oh, and if you're using Big Blue, excuse me, it is. I'm sorry. Can I put that in here? Sticky. I don't know what happened to the sticky that I had in here. One of the children may have pulled it out. Where we had in Big Blue, y'all? Man perceived the magnitude and glory. Hold on. So we were... Oh, chapter 5. So page 8 in Big Blue. Page 8 in Big Blue. All right. 
Man perceived the magnitude and glory of the corporal worlds. He said, how shall I speak of thy great work, of thy great works, O Jehovah, and of thy wisdom and power? I look upon thy countless suns, moons, and stars spread out over the heavens. For millions of years thou hast driven them on in the never-ending firmament, processions in and out and round about of mighty worlds by thy breath going forth. Tell me, O my creator, whence came life, this unseen within me that is conscious of being? Tell me how all the living came into life. Jehovah heard the words of man, and he answered them, saying, I caused the jellyfish and the green scum of the water to be permanently coming forth in all ages, that man might comprehend the age of Simu, when the earth and the shores by the water and the waters also were covered over with commingled atmosphere and corporal substance. And by my presence, I quickened into life and thus made all the living, both vegetation and animals. Not that Simu is jellyfish or the green scum on the water. For the earth in this day produceth not Simu. Nevertheless, the jellyfish and the green scum of the water are relics of the condition which existed in that day of the earth, even as the action of frost on glass in making forms of ferns, trees, and gas um, and grasses. Hold on, let me go back. Nevertheless, <clears throat> nevertheless, the jellyfish and the green scum of water are relics of the condition which existed in that day of earth, even as the action of frost on glass in making forms of ferns, trees, and grasses is a relic of the manner of the creation of the vegetable kingdom. That is interesting. I'm thinking about frost forming on glass and look at what it, um, now I'm gonna be watching frost again. What page in the PDF? Page seven. Remember, if you have the PDF, it's two page numbers. It's the actual document where you can scroll and change the page number you want to go in. And it's also the page number that's typed on the back. What? Why? Get out of the kitchen. Both of you. I know that's improper English. I did it on purpose. But it's an actual type number on the actual document. And it rotates um from page to page so on the actual document it's page seven got it okay cool all right and yeah, i'm gonna have to start looking at frost again because I, I noticed that like a while back when i look at it, i was like oh that look like a tree i remember saying that one day and looking at frost form on the window of cars like actually paying attention to it that's really interesting bella bella how about we wait because ain't nobody starving right now y'all barely just cracked y'all eyes put it up because if you start making that, everybody want to come in here and grab bowls and do all that stuff. No. Give me a few minutes. Put it back. Put it back. The whole point is they're going to see you. When they see you, they're going to want to do it. And the two babies can't make their own. And I got to watch them. Put it back. As I have given... Call today with your daddy. That little girl. As I have given to females a time to bring forth their young, so gave I to earth a time for the conception of the living species on the land, in the water, and in the air above. And I call it the time of the age Simu. In the time of Simu, I brought the earth into Aji and Ga, and darkness was upon the face of the earth for the space of 3,000 years. And yet for another 3,000 years, hell darkness covered all the land and water. And there fell upon the earth condensed nebula. Hey, little baby. I'm going to take that. Go, on, go in your daddy room. If you want to hear that on flow, go in your daddy room and do that. Thank you. You too. These kids. Just me. Shalom, shalom. As I have given to females a time to bring forth their young. Maybe I should have got up at 6.15 because 
they just now getting up. If I had started at 6.15, I'd be ending this right now. And I wouldn't have to worry about none of this foolishness happening in the background. But I couldn't turn the bed loose this morning. <laughs> As I have given to females a time to bring forth their young, so gave I to earth a time for the conception of the living species on the land, in the water, and in the air above. And I called the time the age of Simu. In the time of Simu, I brought the earth into Aji and Ga, and darkness was upon the face of the earth for the space of 3,000 years. And yet for another 3,000 years, half darkness covered the land and water. That right there knocks out the whole 6,000 um age of the earth thing shucks it ain't even done formulating what a planet is habitable yet in six thousand years let me read that again in the time of simu i brought the earth into aji and ga and darkness was upon the face of the earth for the space of three thousand years and yet for another three thousand years half darkness covered all the land and water and there fell upon the earth condensed nebula and dust and stones and water combined, sufficient in some places to cover up the forest I've made. Little girl, listen. First of all, stop coming in here working my appliances. Spill a water everywhere. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, I can see you working your appliances. This is why. This is this is why. Come in here and he grabs a cup and go to the refrigerator. I'm going to have to put this a lock on the refrigerator. And stick it under there to get water. Halfway. And I had to wipe up all the water. It's, it's too much cleaning and running around. I feel like a shark chasing after humans, trying to keep them under control. Which I am. That's what parents are, really. That's what we are. That's what we really are. And we're guarding angels in the flesh for the younger ones that are coming through. Helping them. And there, fell, and there fell upon the earth condensed nebula and dust and stones and water combined, sufficient in some places to cover up the forest I've made. And that which fell was hot like molten iron, and the trees and forests of valleys were beaten down and covered up and burnt to blackness, forming coal, which bears witness to the regions of Aji, Ga, and Nebula in the firmament of heaven. Because of my presence, Quicken I into life all that lives or ever have lived because I am male and female, even in my likeness, thus made I them. Because I am the power to quicken into life, so in likeness of me, thus made I them and with power to bring forth. See, I just, it just clicked me back to something yesterday. <clears throat> yesterday, Brian Joe, shalom, shalom. But how long, though? Look. <clears throat> so I guess I got to consider things like this, too, when I'm looking at this whole Parthenogenesis thing. But I don't know. Because the creator, if we're developing and learning and becoming, and he's teaching us how to do things and form, form elements, manipulate elements and things as he does, so on down the age many millennia to come we will also be a creator of a world right so i guess in the sense that maybe that the parthenogenesis may have some merit to it but at what age and stage of life i don't necessarily think it's here because from the very beginning we got to look at all the raw ingredients learn about the raw ingredients and then we begin to mix and match stuff which is why the male and the female portion of creator has been separated so we can recognize each individual polar opposite, how they work alone, how they work together, what can be produced from it, right? Whatever's going on with this one and whatever's going on with this one will determine the quality of the product you reproduce. I mean, so I guess it has some merit to it, but I think how it's being explained is probably out of out of its proper timeline is what I'm thinking. Listen, listen, I don't know. Because of my presence, quicken I into life all that live 
or ever have lived because I am male and female, even, even in my likeness, thus made I them. Because I am the power to quicken into life, so in likeness of me, thus made I them with power to bring forth. According to their respective places, created I the living, not in pairs only, but in hundreds, thousands, and millions of pairs. So not just uh, Adam and Eve, and they populate the whole world. No, there were multiple Adams and Eves populated and placed in all different continents of the world. I'm going to read it again. Avia Shalom. Tabitha, hey, hey, listen. We're on page eight in um, Romance of the Red Star, which is another name for wives. What's the matter with you, boy? Hey, you quit the screaming for no reason. Because of my presence, quicken I into life all that live or ever have lived, because I am male and female, even in my likeness, thus made I them. Because I am the power to quicken into life, so in likeness of me, so in likeness of me thus made I them with power to bring forth. According to their respective places, created I the living, not in pairs only, but in hundreds, thousands, and millions of pairs. According to their respective places, and the light upon Simu, so quicken I them in their color, adapted to their dwelling places. All right? And explains the color of the different races. All right? Not that one can't produce multiple, because you can right but at the first start of things there were multiple pairs on earth in different places different colors starting off that way each and every living thing created i knew upon the earth of a kind to each itself and not one living thing created i out of another as a sign upon the earth that man in his darkness may not believe that one animal changeth and becometh another, I gave permission for different animals to bring forth a new living animal. I gave permission for different animals to bring forth a new living animal, which should be unlike either its father or mother, but I caused the new product to be barren. And here in, um, in Owaspi and Big Blue, this is where you get that reference at the end of the chapter where it gives you um it gives you an example of a horse and a mule coming together which creates a i'm sorry a female horse and a male donkey i think the female horse and a male donkey produces a henny and a male donkey a female donkey and a male horse produces a mule I could have it backwards, but it's that. It's a donkey and a horse coming together. And depending on whether it's a male or female, depending on whether the donkey is a male or a female and the horse is a male or female, like with the opposites, they'll produce a different outcome. They're either going to produce a henny or they're going to produce a mule, right? Hold on. Let me be okay. Let me tell you exactly what it is. Okay, if you go to page 13, go ahead, you can have it. For example, a mule is the barren offspring of a horse and a donkey. This passage clearly indicated that the def definitive mechanism behind the anatomical progression evident in evolutionary in the evolutionary tree was intelligent design whether or not natural selection or mutation contributed anything to that process. Nevertheless, that fact does not preclude the act of creation from being instrumental in this process as well. 1882, the lowest edition. Okay, so the actual, I must have looked outside of this definition to look at the, the variables of the equation. So if you, if you look it up, if you Google it, how is a henny produced? And it'll say a male horse and a female donkey or whatever right so if you look that up it'll give you the the different variables that play to what's those killer like that because she woke up first and she got it don't come complaining to me about my stuff no no later later i'll let you get on the sun go go upstairs right 
I'm going to put the whole house on um, electronic restriction. All right, let's go back to this. Um, let me read this little paragraph over again. Oh, yeah, 26 minutes. And I'll read this next little chapter after this because it's short, too. And then we're going to hop over here to this reincarnation thing. I'm going to reread this. Because of my presence, quicken I into life all that live or ever have lived. Because I am male and female, even in my likeness, thus made I them. Because I am the power to quicken into life, so in likeness of me, thus made I them. And with power to bring forth, according to their respective places, created I the living. Not in pairs only, but in hundreds, thousands, and millions of pairs. According to their respective places and the light upon Simu, so quicken I them in their color, adapted to their dwelling places. Also in the Book of Jubilees, I, all, all, I also mentioned this the first time we read this through. Is so it the Book of Ju Jubilees? I think it's the Book of Ju Jubilees. In the second chapter, it alludes to more than one man and one woman being at the start of creation, which completely... It will, if they had a left that in, if they had a left Jubilees in, they never would have come up with this one man, one woman, Adam and Eve story. It would have been impossible because around towards the end of that chapter, I forget exactly which verse, um, it alludes to it. It, it doesn't say hundreds, but it says, um, about 26, right? And we know that they didn't screw with a lot of stuff. So I'm thinking they just dumbed that number down you know, they're in Jubilees, but shucks, even still 26 is more than one pair. It was, they said 26 pairs, which would have been, um, what's that? 26 male men and 26 women, right? So 26 pairs spread out. That's what it alludes to. So <clears throat> people just read Jubilees, but they tell you, you know what? It, it, it's not a, what's the word they use? Um, not authorized or they called it pseudepigrapha, right? False. Jamil Shalom says. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hit it by mistake. Um, <clears throat> oh, thank you, Don. Male horse and a female donkey is a henny. Right, okay. So it would be a female horse and a male donkey, which get you a mule. Okay. Just me said, so could they be why? A lot of people who can't have children may be the product of this. It's an interesting question. I don't know. I don't know. To the, to the lady who sent you to drop the cat. I, I thought I texted to you. No. I think I screenshot it and I sent it to you. Go back to the scroll back to that day. And just in case, let me just Facebook hold on one quick second. Let me double check this address. <clears throat> Okay, we're back, y'all. I'm sorry. Hold on. Babe! Yeah, and the point of contact, name, everything is up there. Although the world is off, we got a little bit to do today, right? Because we do more than just federal work. Okay. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's a good question. Thank you, Nazarene. It's saying not canonized, uh, is, is also another word for it. But the word I was looking for was pseudepigrapha, right? They call it, um, false science. So, um, but yeah, that's what throws a lot of people off, but it only throws off those people who are still indoctrinated and believe everything they tell them. Right. And they don't think King James can do no wrong. I'm like, I'm so glad I, <laughs> I've made it past that stage of growth. That's all I can say, right? Just, 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 just be patient with them. They'll move along. Some of them are slower than others, but um, that that is an interesting thought, just me. So could that be why a lot of people who can't have children may be the product of this? I don't know. I mean, I I guess if you um can rule out some medical issues, you know, testing, sperm count, ovaries, all of those things. I guess if you run through those tests, it. And it, it, it could be, it could be. And a lot of couples who both detox together were to have children. A lot of couples who both detox together. What, did I, did I say that? 
Did I read that right? Am I saying it wrong? Detox from what? Or like detox their body because maybe their diet and they can't have. I've seen that too, right? Because also with women, um, if you have like an irregular cycle, and for real, as you get into it, what you you're gonna notice a couple of things. The more you begin to fast, especially water fast, that if your cycle is irregular, it'll regulate itself and then it'll begin to disappear, right? I'm just like something is wrong with this but come to find out the more that i study it there's nothing wrong with it the longer you bleed that's the indication that your diet is really poor because you shouldn't be bleeding that long if and, and i know this is this is this is contra it's it's a controversial topic especially no use how you gonna have children well yeah if you understand the medical side just a little bit more and not just medical from doctors and what they teach you. You really got to get in the holistic side of things to see this because they're teaching you about drugs and how that affects the body and traumas and things like that. And they, they get a little bit of nutritional education. That education with that and how the body operates and how it can heal itself, you don't even really get that until you start looking into the holistic side of things and realizing, wait a minute, having cycles that long is not natural right i'm just like oh shoot but you can tell me that until after i start experiencing it i'm like wait why my cycle drying up and i'm not it's, it's no longer like seven days and sometimes it will go to like nine days right but the more i fasted the lighter it became and the shorter it became as my body began to detox it my whole body began to regulate right so i'm like well dang i like this i like clean eating and living what's long it depends on you what's long to you your cycle is it five days that could be long for some people because it, it ranges for different women some women without fail their cycle lasts for two weeks right and that's that's something is definitely you you losing all kind of nutrients electrolytes and everything you need that blood um but i guess hey gloria i guess it would um it would just depend, right? It, it would just depend on you and what you consider. If you can deal with it that long, then. And and not women um, that just had babies either. Because a lot of times after, well, at least in my case. I know some a lot of women do. But even after you give birth to a child, you tend to bleed a little bit longer. Um, I would say with the more children you have, right? Because, you know, whatever. Um, but it doesn't have to be that way if you learn how to take care of your body and if you're if we're knowledgeable about how the female reproductive system works and what it's to produce what it's supposed to reproduce i mean what it's supposed to produce and what's what you should be concerned about because nowadays we ain't concerned about long periods right just create different types of pads and and all these type of things just to just to accommodate it but we're not really being educated for real right they say three to seven days is normal at this point in my life, I would say I was me from personal experience and fasting and stuff and, and watching it um, decrease. I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Like if I go ham on like the uh, like candy and stuff and not hard candy, but like chocolate, it'll adjust itself again. And it'll lengthen the days. I'm like, you know what? I got I got a guy. I got to stop with the foolishness. Right. Because it's chocolate and peanut butter. I'm just like, it, this This is what, what is really holding my whole, straightening my body all the way out. I, you know, I, I, I have problems with peanut butter and chocolate. <laughs> That's my truth. But, um, yeah. But it will, it will, it'll, it'll adjust itself. But, yeah. So, if the, um, what, hold on, go back up. What Vinette said, a lot of couples who both detox together were a, were a, okay, were able to have children. I believe that because the body will regulate itself and it'll adjust and do what it needs to do. And it'll make you, that, that was the point I was about to make. Water fasting will make you fertile a whole lot faster. That's how I found out I was pregnant with Bella. 
right? I was, I found out I was pregnant with Bella the day I went into a hospital to get my tubes tied, but I had been in the process of doing a lot of, um, uh, water fasting, small spurts. And then I did that long one. Um, I did a long one at that time. And I didn't realize ignorant of how the body works and detoxes and heals itself during the water fast. I mean, I knew about other things, but I didn't think like the reproductive system. And I was, I guess I was already fertile anyway. After I had that atopic pregnancy, they took out the, the fallopian tube that was causing me problem. But that, that one I got is golden, my G. <laughs> and it works without fail every time. We're going to pop you out of another one. Er, 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 18 months, we're going we're gonna to get you going for another one. Pumped and primed. Let's go, sis. We got time to make up. Look, so, um, but it will. It, it heals a lot of stuff, and you get really fertile. And um, your cycle, um, even that time, my cycle, what, it had already begun to shorten. So what used to be, like, seven days for, like, all my life since I had cycles it, it could range from like seven to nine days for me um then it would begin to shorten when i started fasting and then three days became the norm for me which i absolutely love right but it made me it, it I, I would say it this way it made me even more fertile but so it's it's really interesting so i don't know it could be it just could be a combination of different things on why um they they can't get pregnant or whatever you know i think it was just me i gotta go back up so, but yeah, I don't know, but it is, it's a, it's a really, really interesting thought. Okay. Um, yeah, definitely. There were a lot, right? Yeah. The body didn't have to really with fasting dawn. There were a lot less, um, impurities for your body to get rid of. And it can really just focus all that energy to let's do something with this. They just came in. <laughs> let's make a baby. I think Dr. Sabi said it can happen in one day. But what? What can what can happen in one day, Vinette? I'll make sure I clear before. I, um, mm, I'm glad I don't live close to you. I'll, I'll be knocking at your door. Let me taste some peanut butter cups, sis. <laughs> Reese's is my favorite. It used to be Snickers, but then it became Reese's. Oh, the cycle. Uh, she said, Dr. Sabi said it can happen in one day. Yeah, some women have it. Matter of fact, I actually read when I was looking at this the other day. Uh, I was looking into it a little bit more. I was reading. Matter of fact, in the when while I was researching parthenogenesis, the cycle also came up with women, right? And they were talking about there are some women. Um, I forget where the women were at. I forget which continent. I want. Don't quote me. But I think it, I think it was a country in Africa. It was a it was a group of women they were studying um, where they they don't get cycles at all, but they are really really fertile, right? And I, see, I was already going through the whole thinking about the parthenogenesis. Not you know really, I'm I'm just not buying it yet. I was going through that. So even with the cycles not having them at all, it I wasn't really against it. Simply because of what I learned personally by fasting, right? So some things, it's impossible for us to believe until it actually begins to happen to us. And we begin to see, it's like, okay, well, that doesn't seem so far-fetched now, right? So that, um, I believe, I believe that. I believe that's possible, right? You can be completely fertile without having a cycle. I think we've been miseducated on what the cycle is and what it's really for, right? They say it, it it's the childbearing years or whatever but there have been some cases where there are women who've gone through menopause and actually got pregnant right so that kind of uh that kind of isn't is that an anomaly or what was this woman's life like what type of lifestyle what was she doing with her body to cause this to be able to happen because according to what they're teaching us today that's an impossibility and y'all lying some some somebody lying but it wasn't right so it's like what do we do about stuff like that like let's let's re not saying you got to throw the baby out with the bath water but let's just let's run it back <laughs> let's break down all the pieces separate the ingredients let's do a thorough study on each part again with current days um results and stuff different things okay so we got something new it it, it was it was it was a law 
until we had this different thing happen with this variable. So now we need to rethink this. We like, we really need to revisit this. So that's how I look at some things. So yes, after menopause, so don't be, listen, don't be going ham tick if you think you can't get pregnant. Look, but I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure it had a lot to do with her diet because she was, she was plant-based, right? She was plant-based. I, I want to say the woman was Indian. If I, if I remember correctly, she was in, in she was in India, but she had gone through menopause. They did a, they did a study on her. You good? Um, and I'm gonna see if I can, I'm gonna see if I can pull that back up. You can probably, you can probably Google it and something will pop up about it. Um, but, but yeah, so some things that I, I used to believe, I'm like, I, I got to revisit some of this stuff and even more so in the medical realm, simply because of what I began to experience, the more I began to cleanse my body and water fast. I'm like, how was this even possible? Right? So it's, it's, it's interesting. She wrote, see, I have five babies, but I would still get my period until my fourth month in each pregnancy. Yeah, that happens. There, I, Some women have it all the way through, which is crazy to me because, you know, we're taught that when you get pregnant, there is no purpose in you having a cycle sort of automatically stop. And in most cases, it is true. It'll stop, right? But I don't think necessarily it's because you're pregnant. I think because there's a presence of some hormone in your body that's been produced that stops that flow which brings like a balance in one area because there's a new there's a new life form that carries a certain for lack of better words i'm like i said i'm not a medical professional i'm thinking it has to do something with the baby and what's being produced in a baby that kind of offsets that right so i don't i don't know i get knocked up from dropping him off at the murphy hotel <laughs> I, if I get knocked up, I'm dropping him off at the Murphy Hotel. That's funny, Tigla. <clears throat> like, we need any more kids over here. Look. Yeah, your body needs that blood. I agree. All right, y'all. So, but it is, it's, it's really, really interesting. Okay. We got on this talking about this, the, the henny and the mule. Hold on. I ain't going to read this second chapter. I'm going to just finish this chapter, which is only a couple verses. Hey, hey, chill out. Get my, get my highlighter. Get on up. Mm, thank you. Come here and mess with my stuff. You ain't getting them, little girl. They play with everything. Okay. Each and every living thing I created new. Hey, chill. I'm going to sing y'all to the law. Hush. All right. Each and every living thing created. I knew upon the earth of a kind. Hey, everybody to the law. Come on, to the law, to the law. Like I'm almost done. It's shortly. Go. No. You too, girl, baby. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Don't look at none of my bookcase. Let's go. Come on. Mm-mm. Live long. Go. Mm, yep. Dance up the stairs. I told y'all about the interruptions with the kids. Tony. Shalom, brother. Uh, Vinette said a lot of women went through menopause, detoxed their bodies, and got pregnant. Yeah, that that's not that that is not far fetched. I believe that. I'm. I'm it's a, listen. It's a whole new education we got to go through. Uh, where we have to be re-educated appropriately, and um, medicine doesn't need to lead it this time. Holistic, master herbalists, teachers familiar with nature and the body needs to lead the education on this right and the medical facility they can follow up um with um they can walk side by side but not be so pushy on the drugs first right let's let's push the herbs first the natural holistic way first and if you're so far down the road where you've torn your body to pieces where you may not have the time to sustain your body to get them good nutrients in you, we may need to look. We may need to do a little bit more evasive work on you. That's when the medical field should come in. Whether it's surgeries, I mean, sometimes you could be so far gone with a, a disease or something, a cancer, where it absolutely, it absolutely needs to be cut out, right? And but I would even say then to hold on depending on what it is because looking at some of the studies that Yaki did and even Dr. Sabian um 
Um, Patrick Delves, who's a master herbalist down in, um, um, he's in, I think, uh, Granada. I think he's in Granada. Um, but he travels a lot too. But there have been people in stage four cancer, but you, but they were, they were really serious about living too. So like they went cold turkey, everything. Well, okay. When I say cold turkey, depending on what they had going on with them. And because of the, because the master herbalists, they were knowledgeable about certain diseases, some things, especially if they're on medicine, they were aware of all of those things. So they, that they didn't just like stop their medicines and start doing all this. No, they, they combined while they still took their medicine, they gave them herbs, right? And as their bodies began to change and adjust, they worked with their doctors to taper down the medicine until it was tapered down enough and you got less drugs and more herbs in your body, right? And then the healing process begins to go. So if you're really gone and your health down, you, I would say definitely seek professional help. Not just a medical, but also holistic as well, because just about everything can be healed um, with herbs, the body. Even, I used to say, maybe not traumas, but I've, I've seen a couple stories. A gentleman broke his leg. Matter of fact, doctor, um, well, he, he was a doctor, then he went completely holistic. The fasting, uh, Dr. Lauren Lofman, right? He does water fasting. He has a whole retreat in Costa Rica now. He constantly teaches on it. But he tells you about a time when he had first started water fasting. And he was a, a contractor. And he fell off a ladder. Was it ladder? He either fell off a ladder. He fell down the stairs. And he broke his leg. You know, went to the hospital. No, he had a couple different traumas. He, he broke his leg. And another one, I think he had cut himself really bad with a saw. You know, he went and he got medical help, but what he did with his um with his leg, I remember, with him breaking it, they they put it in a cast and everything. And um, but what he did, he didn't eat for like six weeks, right? He completely just water fasted. And the bones healed themselves. All the doctors did, I mean, I guess a a, a lot of times that's all they're gonna they just gonna set it and you just need to rest. But what happened was his broken leg and it was shattered in a couple different places. It healed so fast that it astounded the doctors. And they told him that he, the, because of how he broke it, he probably, he'd be able to walk or whatever, but he would probably be having issues. And they were completely floored when his bones had healed and didn't have any, it didn't have any residue of the break in six weeks. They took x-rays. They were floored. And they said, it's a miracle. I don't, we don't know what happened. He said, I water fasted, right? So even water fasting will help heal physical traumas and help it heal back in a way. But that, that, that's real discipline and dedication, right? So um, you can't deviate from the holistic path. Oh, you right. Listen, because you'll, 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 you'll go, like you'll, you'll come like out of people that go into remission. <clears throat> When people get healed of stuff and then it flares back up, that's an indication to me, like immediately, that they went back to their old ways of eating and their lifestyle. The thing that gave them cancer, it gave them cancer again because they didn't stop what they was doing. They gave them the cancer in the first place. And some people don't even realize that, right? If you get healed, whether it's through medical doctors, change your diet. And all that you do, change your diet. Stop eating meat, stop eating dairy, uh, plant-based, more fruits and veggies, you know, until you get healed. Then you can go to, like, all fruits or whatever. You can do some, like, uh, salads, different things. Like, it's, it's different ways, different variations and stuff. But, yeah, when it flares back up, you're right. Um, <clears throat> the sickness comes back. And the second time, it normally kills them, right? Because they get discouraged. Oh, my gosh, I thought I had beak cancer and this. And I was in remission. I was in remission for four years. But what did you do during them four years? Did you change your diet? No, you still ate like there was no tomorrow. And then now you don't have a tomorrow, right? So it happens. So, but yeah, <clears throat> water fast speeds up everything. Certain mushrooms. I heard that too. I know you're the guru. <clears throat> with the mushrooms, Tony. He said certain mushrooms work well against cancer as well. I believe that. I I, I absolutely love mushrooms, but I just haven't did any of the um <clears throat> the meditation.
type mushrooms, right? I haven't done it that way. I ain't did shrooms or nothing like that. But I love my, all kinds of mushrooms. I love it. I saute them. I eat them raw. Um, cooked mushrooms. Um, I think what Tony is talking about, Vinette, is the kind you can um, you can put in your you can put in your peace pipe. <laughs> and he he probably it's other ways you can probably do it too. Um, <clears throat> All right, y'all, let me finish this little chat. I got like four sentences. Hold on. And then we'll go to the uh, the reincarnation, James. Each and every living thing created I, new upon the earth, of a kind, each to itself, and not one living thing created I out of another. As a sign upon the earth that man in his darkness may not believe that one animal changeth and becometh another, I gave permission for different animals to bring forth a new living animal, which should be unlike either its father or mother, but I caused the new product to be barren. And that's how we got on what we were just talking about, talking about the mule and the henny and the reproduction and the barrenness of it. And this shall be testimony before all men that I created each and all the living to bring forth after their own kind only. And when I bring a new world into the time of Simu, my presence quickeneth the substance into life. Also, with this, <clears throat> the different races of people are one kind. We're of like kind. How do we know? Because we can reproduce with all the different races and not, and still, <clears throat> if you can reproduce, a black person with a Chinese person, Indian person, whatever. And what you produce can still reproduce, which lets us know that we've reproduced after our own kind. So even there, races, it, it, the whole race card thing goes out the window, right? Because if a black person made it with a white person and they got something barren and that happened over and over and over and over Every time it happened, we would know that we're not compatible and we are really not like one another, right? Because we keep producing something that's barren. But that would have to be the case over and over and over again. There can't be any cases to where it worked one time because then that wouldn't be true. Then we would have to begin to look at, okay, well, what's going on with your body? If there, if there are cases where it's never happened, that a black person coming together with a white person produce something that was um, that could reproduce. Um, hold on, what did I just say? I'm getting mixed up like with the hen and mule. Okay, so if every time they come together and reproduce, that will let us know that the creator doesn't want that lineage to go on. But it's coming together all the time, and these babies is having babies, and they babies are having babies. They keep mixing, mixing and matching all the different colors. You're thoroughly mixed. Some of us got. Four different type of nationalities inside of us, but they're all compatible because when we come together, we can reproduce and what we reproduce can reproduce itself, right? It's fully fertile. That, that, that teaches us something if we will pay attention, right? Throw the whole race card out the window. I know people have their preferences. Like I have my preference, you know, um, but other people, they love the multiple flavors. They, they love Baskin Robbins <laughs> and that's okay. It's okay. Listen, and this shall be testimony before all men that I created each and all the living to bring forth after their own kind only. We are the human race. We are one kind. <laughs> yeah, we know you weren't talking about portobello mushrooms, Tony. <laughs> Hold on. And this shall be testimony before all men that I created each and all the living to bring forth after their own kind only. And when I bring forth a new world, and when I bring a new world into the time of Simu, my presence quickeneth the substance into life. According to the locality and the surroundings, so do I bring forth the different species. For they are flesh of my flesh and spirit of my spirit. To themselves give I themselves. Nevertheless, they are all members of my person. As a testimony to man, behold, earth was once a globe of liquid fire. The sun, right? 
earth used to be a sun. As a testimony to man, behold, earth was once a globe of liquid fire, nor was there any seed thereon. But in due season, I rained down Simu on earth, and by virtue of my presence, quicken I into life all the living. Without seed, quicken it, without seed, quicken it, I the life that is in them. Let me read that again. Without seed, quicken I the life that is in them. And we can see that same process still happening, even though we won't be alive long enough to see the, our current sun transform into a, a habitable earth over the process of time. I mean, we, I guess, I mean, I guess we will once we pass out, when we become fully born, we can watch and study as it moves through the different ages. But there's something happening on earth today that proves that. Think about the volcanoes. They do the same thing, right? And how islands are created. And now you got islands that you can actually go live on. And it, it's producing greenery and stuff like that. It's still happening. All right. So that's that's it for today, beautiful people. We're going to pause. That's it for this. Let's hop over here to... Um, let me keep my spot over here, too. <clears throat> I'm going to put another tab right here so I keep my spot in the big blue all right so in big blue tomorrow we're gonna pick up on page nine chapter six in book of Jehovah but in romance of the red star book of Jehovah is literally that one chapter and then it separates into another chapter called the cycle of creation all right all right y'all so I've got y'all books let's go ahead and See about this reincarnation piece. All right. So remember, <clears throat> we still reading Feel God to the Spirit World. We just finished reading the reincarnation hoax chapter. But within this chapter, she alluded to another chapter that she did a little more in-depth research of reincarnation, which was in this book she wrote. So after we got done with that, we picked this up. And once we're done reading this chapter, which is chapter 7 in this, Delusions in Science and Spirituality, we'll go ahead and finish up and read the last chapter of this. All right? And then go through the appendix again because the three appendices that follows chapter 11 is really good. All right. So we pause on page 288. And if you go there, all the way at the bottom, the, the, the heading says Spiritualism and Reincarnation. That's what we're going to start. Spiritualism and reincarnation. Not yet. But they upstairs. You can get some of that and go in there and get to that table in there. Just don't spill it. Oh, Lord. They See, they hear bags moving. Here he come. What? What you doing? No. Oh, yes. Go ahead. Get, get them a cup and put them some in the cup for me. Chill, girl. Just, just wait. You gonna see. You gonna see. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Hold on, y'all. Come here. Come here. Okay. You need some socks on your feet. Oh. Hold on. I gotta wash my hands. Wash up, please. Okay, y'all. Just, just wait, little girl. Take the baby doll through there. All right. Oh, see ya. Oh, see ya. See ya. Yeah. Oh, see ya. Give it in a minute. Oh, see ya. Oh, see ya. Okay. Spiritualism and reincarnation. Quote: We climb from world to world in the continuing road of life. End quote. And that is the Hopi Mystery Play. Hopi. H-O-P-I. If y'all have it, look into the Hopi. I didn't know the Hopi was a thing until a few years ago when I woke up and I was in that in-between sleep. I heard the word for the first time. I don't know if it was my Ashar or, was the, it, or if it was the creator talking to me and asked me, what do you know about the Hopi people? I'm like, I didn't even know there was a people. What do you mean? And I was spelling it wrong when I was researching it until I guess one of my um, one of my suggestions that popped up. It said, did you mean Hopi H-O-P-I? 
I was doing like whole P-H-O-P-E-E. -E. I wasn't thinking about I. I was just putting it in different. Then I realized, wait a minute, maybe I'm, I am spelling it wrong. And I started learning about the Hopi people Mommy. and the Hopi prophecy. Mommy. Don't fill it up that much Mommy. next time. Go eat that first. But this is it's really interesting what you will find in the Hopi prophecy. Um, a lot of things that they've said when you read that it's come to pass, and I shared it before some time back. How um this is girl, chill out. Yes. Bella, can you put her some? I actually put some in the cup for her. I got I got no cereal. Her and Jackson. Um, I'll, I'll, um, it'll be a little bit later. I remember to uh, share that. Okay. Page 289. Hey, see that, listen, this is why. Turn it down. That's why I said go sit at the other table. Because it's too loud. Go. Come on, Jen. You can follow them. Share with them. You too, go. Okay. Confusing spiritualism with reincarnation, they are most definitely not the same, has become a real problem. Bella. Bella. All right. You say you share with Fatma? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Jackson, you share. Um, what's your name, boy? Jace, you share with Jackson. Okay. Confusing spiritualism with reincarnation, they are most definitely not the same, has become a real problem. Consider the Bridie, the Bridie Murphy case. Quote, the eventual debunking of the Bridie story, B-R-I-D-E-Y. The eventual debunking of the Bridie story, wrote one scientist referring to the well-known reincarnation hoax in the 1950s, Help to shape my view of supernatural and, and paranormal phenomena. I'm not going to believe in reincarnation or ghosts or out-of-body experiences. Stein, 2012, page 26. Throwing out the baby, spiritualism, with the bathwater, reincarnation. Dr. Stein was talking about the sensation started by Maury Bernstein's book, the Search for Bridie Murphy, in which a Colorado housewife named Virginia T was taken, mistaken actually, for the reincarnation of a long dead Irish woman named Bridie Murphy. It turned out that someone named Bridie Murphy Corkle had been a neighbor of Virginia's when she was a little girl. See, how, how, how can she be reincarnated into her? When she was already alive, when she was alive, right? That that debunks the theory right then and there, according to reincarnation, right? How are you going to reincarnate into somebody that's already born? That's like possession. Listen, I'm not going to believe in reincarnation or ghosts or out-of-body experiences, end quote. Stein, 2012, page 26. Throwing out the baby, which is spiritualism, with the bath water, the bath water being reincarnation. Dr. Stein was talking about the sensation started by Maury Bernstein's book, The Search for Bridie Murphy, in which a Colorado housewife named Virginia T was taken, mistaken, actually for the reincarnation. Girl! <laughs> Listen, ask me why I got Fruit Loops. Okay, so in the uh, in the group, in the uh, create a game group chat, right? Somebody was it? I, I think it was Sayla. Sayla posted a link about this dude. It was this black dude showing a uh, a video. It was a TikTok. I want to get food. Oops. To try this little thing. Listen. There was this black dude. And they put it side by side. You know how people do reaction videos. And they let the uh, the video play. 
and they sit there and they watch the video like, uh-huh, I'm watching. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so with this video that Selah shared, there was this white dude who was doing this experiment. And so you got this black, woke, woke conscious dude. I got his little goatee braid down like this, right? I think he had something wrapped around it, right? Pay attention. This is how the pyramids was built. <laughs> First of all, matter of fact, somebody got the link. Somebody go grab that link. Y'all, it, it shucks. It may be all the way up. I think day, uh, uh, day before yesterday. I'm going to share it with y'all, right? Listen, I'm going to share it with you in hopes that they ain't took it down yet. Because I made a comment after we, tr listen, I had my brethren and my sisters on the phone when we tried this, right? They on FaceTime. They was like, girl, go ahead. We want to see it. <laughs> hold on. We, we got all the elements of this. Uh, hold on. Let me show you real quick. Man, what y'all do with my uh oh okay look I don't want and I picked up multiple boxes because the kids like fruit loops. I picked up I picked up this is one with marshmallows, right? The one he used was a regular one, so I got regular fruit loops too. And we use the regular fruit loops. We got the little bowls. We got me one of the little bowls, same size that he had, right? Got the little bowl. He had four spoons, I got four spoons, he had two double A batteries and four nine volt batteries, right? And so the black conscious dude, watch this, y'all. Pay attention. We need to get back to what our ancestors was doing. Watch this. This is how the pyramids was made. I'm like, you got me. I'm going to try it. <laughs> I'm going to try it with my kids because if it is, I'm going to do a whole video about it, right? And so here we go. Here, here we go. I got the bowl. I got the, there's like, girl, girl, what? and my brother, my sister was twisting my brother's hair, so he watching from the floor, she twisting his hair, my other sister's sitting there beside him watching, I'm on FaceTime with the phone propped up on the table with all these little things, the bowl right here, and Jonathan was like, make sure you flip the batteries, one is upside down, the other one is upside right inside the bowl, right, make sure the the negative is at one end and the positive for the other one is, you know, I'm just flipping them upside down. I was like, boom, got it. Okay, put them in batteries. And my son, my baby sister, she, she was like, first, when you put them in there, make sure the batteries are together. So, boom, batteries together, put them in there. And you get the spoons and you sit them on top, right? You, it's four spoons. You put them in a, in a cross, right? North, south, east, west. And so... In here, you got the spoons. Hold on, let me get into two spoons. Hold on. Come on, have mercy. And 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 you get the real spoons. Don't use no plastic spoons, right? <laughs> so let me show y'all. Let me show y'all this foolery. <laughs> Hold on. Hey, who took my uh? Oh, here you go. Okay. This one. All the, all, all the ingredients for this little experiment, y'all. I'm going to do it live with y'all. Hold on. Yeah. Buying these darn expensive Navalt batteries. I thought I had some in the house, but I didn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen. If y'all want to try this at home, I guarantee you, by the time you get done with the experiment, you gonna have extra box of Fruit Loops in the house. You will catch that once you try this experiment. <laughs> Listen, okay, right. So two batteries. He said, take them, flip them upside down in the bowl. So you got this positive end, negative end here, and a positive end down here, and negative end is flipped upside down. Put them together inside the bowl. Boom, got said bowl, said batteries in position. Video, right? When you put them in there like this, in the middle of the bowl, right? Like that. And then you take the two spoons, take the two spoons, and you sit them on top of each other like this. So in the bowl, you gonna have, <laughs> you gonna have two like this. And then you gonna take the other one and you gonna sit them in the opposite direction like this. So I'm watching this, playing a little music in the background. I'm like, oh, shizzle, kids. Oh, we're going to start building pyramids again, right? So they're inside the bowl, looking like a cross, right? Batteries on top of cross, inside the bowl, right? Boom. But what happens is, which also happened 
in the video, right? When you put the, the first set of spoons in, it's going to separate the batteries. So, so now the batteries, the batteries, instead of looking like this inside the bowl, see how the bat, oh shoot, instead of the batteries looking like that, staying in place, they separated and went to either side when you let it go. And if they didn't separate with just the two, they was going to definitely separate with the four, but that was okay. That's what he showed, that the batteries went to this side, and that was okay, right? Yes, baby. So, boy, come here. Listen, come here. Listen. So, I got the batteries in. Go to the table. Go. That's your own. Got the batteries in. Got the first two spoons in. Take the other two spoons, right? And make sure the spoon's the same size. We got a couple different size spoons, so I made sure, okay, let's use the soup spoons. They all the same size, look the same and everything, right? We want to make sure that the energy is being conducted through this whole thing evenly, right? We got same size spoons sitting on top of batteries inside this bowl. Boom. There go the batteries. There go the spoons inside the bowl. Sister still braid my brother half. Baby sister like, boom. So next, put in the Fruit Loops, Pam. <laughs> Not realizing it's for Fruit Loops doing this experiment. <laughs> we had to see this all the way to the end, my G. We had to see it all the way to the end. So I get the Fruit Loops. Not with the mic. Didn't have marshmallows. Let me, let me just get the real box. Right? Because somebody like, you did it wrong since trying to get it. No. Got the regular Fruit Loops, boom, regular Fruit Loops, no marshmallows, right? So here's what happens. You take it, and you got the whole spoons sitting in the cross, north, south, east, west, on top of the two double-A batteries that have now split apart and moved to the side of the bowl. Take the Fruit Loops, This is how the pyramids are built. Pay attention, my black people. I'm like, go ahead, black power. <laughs> Girl, go eat it. <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying to do an experiment. <laughs> Listen. All right, ever so carefully, pull in the Fruit Loops. <laughs> All four of us should have been. Look, these four spoons represent me and my siblings. <laughs> me, Lisa, Sherry, and Jonathan. The Fruit Loops. Look. Pouring the Fruit Loops in, she said, boom. So make sure you cover it. The spoons is covered all the way with the Fruit Loops. I said, boom. Got it, baby, sis. Boom. So now we got this whole setup. Sit it right there. Now we got this whole setup, right? And hold on. Let me just see if I can bring y'all upside down so y'all can see what happens. And I'm going to show y'all. And when you go back and watch the video, I want y'all to pay attention to this, which we didn't catch until a couple times, right? Listen. Look, hold on. Hold on. I'm going to see if I can bring all y'all at the same time so y'all can see this. Look. Hold on. Look at the bowl, right? Oh, shoot. <laughs> hold on, y'all. <laughs> hold on. I just messed my experiment up. Hold on. Wait, hold that. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Hold up. Hold up. I dropped my phone. Wait a minute. Let me fix it. Hold up. Wait a minute, hold on. Okay, just for the sake of props, let me just pour some more fruit. <laughs> I'm just, hold on. No, let me do it again because I'm about to be like, sis, you did it wrong. Hold on, we're just going to move this bowl out the way. Look, hold up. Hold up. We'll start over real quick. What, baby? I want more Look, okay, boom. Flipped upside down, back in the bowl. We're here up and arrange these spoons. Boom. 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 Boom, right? Okay, pull the fruit. The other fruit loops. Without marshmallows. <laughs> right? Oh, man.
Here we go. Take some of these. Look. I know. Oh, yeah. You waste them food. The kids gonna eat it. Chill out. Chill out. Okay. Let's try this one more time. Maybe I'll do it one at time. Facebook. You about to look first. Boom. Okay, you see the... Hold on. Okay, there you go. See the Fruit Loop bowl, right? The Fruit Loops are covering the bowl all the way, right? Okay, so boom. <laughs> Mom, look. <laughs> Tootie, baby, hold this phone. Just like that. Hold that. Like that. Hold that. Right there. Okay. Look. Move it this way so they can see. Boom, like that. Okay, so now, you too, so y'all can see. Look. Okay. That's what it looked like. Right there, right? That's what he showed us. Okay. Now, then what happens? <laughs> Hold up. Listen. This is the lab part of class. Anything goes here. Look. Anything goes here. We talk about sex and fruit loops. <laughs> okay. So then what proceeds to happen? Do just pay attention, y'all. Stick around to the end. Watch this to the end. This is how the pyramid is made. Then he he takes the bowl. Sets it over to the side, right? Out of the view completely of the cameras. And then he proceeds with... Right here. He proceeds with the four batteries, right? Now, he had a mix and match of batteries. I'm just like, brand new 9 volt batteries will give it more power. So I chose Duracell, right? Somebody I'm like, well, you know, you gotta go try this with the Energizer Bunny batteries. No, nope, I don't think so. I just think they want to see what different brand of Fruit Loops is really out there in the world. And you set them in the same position as the spoons are, north, south, east, and west. Let me show you again. Okay, this time I'm gonna be careful. Hold on. So, boom. Here we go. You see that? North, south, east, and west. Boom. There we go. Then, what you do, my sister said, make sure the batteries, my baby sister now, other middle sister still break my brother hair, they paying attention. Baby sister, make sure they're spaced enough apart, and when you set the bowl, back over it because now you're going to take the bowl and hover it over the batteries right the batteries and across each spoon should be over one battery no you ain't getting nothing no each battery should be over under a spoon right and that right there is going to conduct energy but after we did that a couple times and what he did he took it and he placed it over the batteries. Let me see if I can do this again without dropping the phone this time. Okay. So now, boom, can y'all see? So now you will take this and levitate it over this. Not touching the batteries, right? Not touching the batteries. Just levitating it over and adjusting the batteries. You may have to spread the batteries out just a little bit, right? So we spread the batteries out a little bit just to make sure a battery is here. Here, here, and here, right? Give it some room. And after he positioned it a little bit, there should be some type of electronic force that then begins to take over batteries, spoon metal, right? And then it'll begin to float in the air. And as it sat there, he did this. And he blew the bowl. And the bowl began to do like this over the batteries. I'm like, Oh, shoot. We can still be making pyramids today, right? So I'm like, I got to try this. I'm on my way to the store to get some batteries and some Fruit Loops. Pay attention, my black conscious people. We should still be building pyramids, right? His goatee hanging down from his chin. I'm like, you dummy, right? That's how I felt when I got done. Direct current when I got done. Now, did it work in the video? It absolutely did work in the video, right? So everything is in clear view. And so my baby sister's like, Pam, hold on, hold on. Let me get my phone, right? So she get her phone because we was using my sister's phone to 
they were FaceTiming me on my sister Leisha phone. So she looking, hold on, I'm watching the video now. Hold on, keep the stuff right there. Okay, so boom, boom. Is the batteries touching? I said, no, they didn't spread apart. He said, well, yeah, they spread apart in his video. How many Fruit Loops you got in the bowl? One, two, three, there's four of us. No. <laughs> Listen, and so I was like, okay, so maybe, and that's when I said, let me adjust, make sure the spoons is the same size. I adjusted the spoons. <laughs> Make sure we had the same soup spoons at that point. And then she said, make sure the batteries are spared apart. I said, okay, what about the batteries? What about the positions of the batteries that the bowl is floating on? Should they be turned like negative positive? John was like, well, yeah, you got a point. Getting his hair braided. Yeah, you got a point. I was like, mm, he didn't really say that. How does it look? Well, it look like they're going in the same fashion. I was like, okay, so make sure they all turn around this way. Boom. See if it's floating. Boom, boom. Nope, let's turn the batteries around this way. Not floating yet. It's not working, Billy. I'm like, okay, so, hmm. Teacher said, hold on, pal. Hold on. You got to be. My baby sister making little comments. She said, wait a minute, hold on. I just noticed something. I said, what? She said, okay, so first of all, why the spoon sitting on top of the Fruit Loops? She said, what in them spoons completely submerged in the Fruit Loops? I said, yeah. She said, pull up the video, pal. I pulled it up. I'm like, what darn? So when he set the bowl, out of view after he prepared for a part of this little project after he prepared it he set it completely out of the view of the camera and when he after he set the batteries up and he brought the bowl back in no longer were the spoons submerged under the fruit loops but they were now looking like this i'm like girl you got out the detail now they were looking like this they were sitting Literally sitting on top of the Fruit Loops with a couple Fruit Loops on top of all four spoons, right? So instead of being completely submerged, now they look like this. Well, you can see them, right? So now you can see the spoon part that you put in your mouth when you eat your soup, right? At first, they were all under the fruit loops and all you could see was the stems of the spoon so now the spoons are sitting at the top i'm like and i said this regin but i said <laughs> i said the full word and he a white dude right i said this regin i said he didn't pull the wool of eyes or maybe we not paying attention i'm like boy you know and i started laughing i was like i'm glad my kids like fruit loops but then my sister said oh pam it's something else pay attention Look at them fruit loops beside that spoon once the bowl starts spinning. I said, okay. She said, what you see? I'm like, you got to be kidding me. What they did, they took an electrical device that they didn't show us. When he set the bowl out of sight, either they already had another bowl prepared and just switched that bowl out, or they pulled the fruit loops out. I want to say they had another bowl prepared. But whoever had prepared that other bowl was not paying attention to detail. And they didn't put them spoons back in the same position with the fruit loops all on top of it. Now, you ever watch the movies and you got scenes where um, somebody's smoking a cigarette or something and they standing here, they standing here talking side by side. Now they're smoking, but when they come back, they got a whole different color shirt on. Like, wait a minute, y'all catch that? That happens in movies a lot, right? So they weren't paying attention to the details. Although the bowl came back, it was out of position. The spoons are now floating at the top, right? I'm like, hey, ain't that some crap? <laughs> and what we found out is when the bowl, when he blows it and the bowl starts to turn over the batteries, that really was happening. But what was in it, there was a magnetic device. Now, it did never showed you what was in the bowl, but me understanding just a little bit about... And you would think I would have caught this before I even went out here and bought all this stuff for this little project. Pay them something missing from them. <laughs> they done put an electrical device down here. And there was a piece of it that you could see. A little transparent white piece that you could see sticking out of Fruit Loops every time the bowl came around. I'm like, these bastards. Yeah. This is how pyramids was made, my black conscious people. We need to get back to this. I'm like, I was reading through comments, and nobody had caught on to it yet. Somebody asked, they said, does anybody know where this original video is at without the idiot on the left? <laughs> Talking about this dude. Yeah, my black people. This is how the pyramids was made. 
let me tell you something. After we got done, I said, well, I guess we know who the real Fruit Loops are in this experiment. Us four. <laughs> and we was hollering, laughing. So this was some crap, right? How many of y'all? I look, Prince still here. Because I know you had said you was going to the store to get some supplies too to try this. Did you try it? <laughs> well, I put you on blast like that. <laughs> I know I'm more than more. It's more fruit loops out there than me. <laughs> no, this is back. But I'm serious. Did you try it? You still your prince? Listen, we have fun doing it though. But I would have still, until I pulled it up, I would have still been rearranging the position of the batteries. Well, maybe if they were sideways like this, maybe flip this one. Okay, maybe need to swatch it, swap this one. Maybe this got more power. Maybe this got dead cell. Let's switch out the batteries. Okay, he had two of them, two of these. Let me go get some more batteries. I would have did all the different variables to switch it around to get this project right. Sometimes you just need somebody there paying attention to detail while you're sitting here trying to readjust stuff. You'll be readjusting for the rest of your life trying to get this to work. Utter insanity. You don't have all the pieces they had because they, they hid the missing ingredient that made it turn, right? There was an electrical device that they had put in the bottom of it, right? And to pull the wool over our eyes, cause slay the hand, the best magic trick ever done on social media in front of your face. It's not, but it was up there. It was, it was so intriguing that it had me going spending money on something. I could have, I don't know, I could have bought me a pack of Reese's and ate them. <laughs> Listen, y'all. So, I just remember that when she came over here asking for these uh, Fruit Loops with that bowl, it reminded me of the, the thing that we did. Listen, but it was, I think it was time well spent. It taught me a lesson. Pay attention to the details first before you jump fully in. Get another set of eyes. Look at this. Am I missing something? Because, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go spend some unnecessary money. But this is intriguing. Maybe we should try this. See it all the way to the end, my G. Right? And it was for us. Fruit Loops there with this. Doing this experiment. Right? And I'm steady. I'm Twist this battery. Okay, it ain't mm -mm, it ain't floating yet, y'all. Hold on, let me let me turn it. We turn it each way with each spoon. Is it floating yet? No, it ain't floating yet. Hold on, wait, I, wait. I feel the magnet. <laughs> like serious, I'm like, wait, no, but it shouldn't be being attached to it. It should be repelling it. It should be floating it. The battery was pulling the spoon down to it. I'm like, wait, something is happening here though, y'all. Wait, <laughs> I would give anything to see my Ashars and all the unseen spirits that are around here watching me do this. I would, I would love to see their faces while I'm sitting here being foolish like this. Dumb. We thought, we thought she was dumb. Now we know of a certain that she is truly dumb. <laughs> Listen, but look, it was, it was fun. It was fun, but it helps me to think through processes, right? It helps me to think through processes, and I can tell you why it didn't work and how we found a whole new brand of Fruit Loops by the time we got done with this project, this experiment. Y'all, we like past the time today. Hold up. No, really? Wait, we only had an hour and a half. Sometimes we be going like two hours. Look, okay, let me read a little bit more of this. This this Bridie Murphy reincarnation thing. I ain't gonna read that much. I'm gonna probably just read to the to the end of this page. Well, to the end of this conversation on the next page. All right. Confusing spiritualism with reincarnation. Ah ah. Put it back. Get this. Come here. Dirty up my dishes. Go ahead. Confusing spiritualism with reincarnation, they are most definitely not the same, has become a real problem. Consider the Bridie Murphy case. Quote, the eventual debunking of the Bridie story, wrote one scientist referring to the well-known reincarnation hoax in the 1950s, helped to shape my view of supernatural and paranormal phenomena. I'm not going to believe in reincarnation or ghosts or out-of-body experiences. End quote. Stein, 2012, page 26. 
throwing out the baby, spiritualism, with the bath water, reincarnation, Dr. Stein, <clears throat> see, I need some water, y'all. Hold on. I did all this talking and laughing. Hold on. <clears throat> Dr. Stein was talking about the sensation started by Maury Bernstein's book, The Search for Bridie Murphy, in which a Colorado housewife named Virginia T was taken, mistaken actually, for the reincarnation of a long dead Irish woman named Bridie Murphy. It turned out that someone named Bridie Murphy Corkle had been a neighbor of Virginia when she was a little girl. Three months after the publication of Bernstein's book, America's leading expert in parapsychology, J.B. Ryan, was asked what he thought of Bernstein's claims. Thank you. Nope. Three months after the publication of Bernstein's book, America's leading expert in parapsychology, J.B. Ryan. Now we might have to just end this right now. Hey, stop it. You're too loud. No, when I tell you, you can. I'm sorry, y'all. My oldest son is not here, and I really am watching them while I'm trying to do this. So I'm going to read to like the end of this paragraph, then we're going to pause, y'all. Three months after the publication of Bernstein's book, America's leading expert in parapsychology, J.B. Ryan was asked what he thought. Do me a favor. Just keep an eye on her real quick. I'm literally going to end this in like two minutes. I'm going to finish this small. I ain't going to finish the page. Quote, leading a person back through hypnotic regression was done in this case is the wrong road to take. Science should first attempt to discover whether there is a spirit personality, remarkable person, while in trance, could receive messages from spirits trying to reach living people. My italics, Ryan, 1956, page 300. Let me read that paragraph again. Three months after the publication of Bernstein's book, America's leading expert in parapsychology, J.B. Ryan, was asked what he thought of Bernstein's claims quote, leading a person back through hypnotic regression was done in this case, as was done in this case, is the wrong road to take. Science should first attempt to discover whether there is a spirit personality. Remarkable persons, while in trance, could receive messages from spirits trying to reach living people. My italics, end quote, Ryan, 1956, page 300. The fact that Virginia Teague had the ability to enter immediately into deep trance, less than 12% of the population can do this, suggests that herself was a, that she herself was a psychic sensitive, capable, even unbeknownst to herself, of making contact with departed souls, the spirit personalities of which J.B. Ryan spoke. In fact, Bridie herself comes off as a typical earthbound soul whose best shot at some action is through the sensitive, the clairvoyant, the mortal. This is why you don't understand. Hold on. The cereal I know. I'm about to get it up. I know. I know. Thank you. I'm about to get it up. In fact, Bridie herself comes off as a typical earthbound soul whose best shot at some action is through the sensitive, the clairvoyant, the mortal receiving station. And we're gonna pause right there, y'all, because this this is this is too much going on in my background. I can't even focus. Ow. So <laughs> we're gonna restart sweet. this page tomorrow. Right where we began at, right here on page 288. We're gonna start this whole little paragraph. Spiritualism and reincarnation over. Right. That, that's that's it. <laughs> that's it for the day. I probably should have just ended it after my little reenactment of this uh <laughs> the, the, the fruit loop. And pyramid exp experiment. <coughs> Matter of fact, that's gonna be in our title today. Hey, girl, listen. See, that's see, that's this is this this is how I offer to babysit my own grandkids. I just l listen. You know how something be they I make my eyes start twitching like they come in the house. I'm like, oh lord, what they gonna do this weekend? <laughs> Mom, what I would do if I could dip people in bubbles, put all of them in the bubbles. You gonna put all of them in a the bubble? <laughs> Isaiah will be like, when are they going home?
So I'm gonna put all of them in a bubble. <laughs> and that's my eight year old talking. Up to the roof. Put them in a bubble up on the roof. Set up to the roof. All right, y'all. Let me let me let me finish this. Two. Hold on. Two eighty eight. I can't finish this. It's, it's too much. They're getting rowdy. I need to feed them some real food and stuff. And it's, it's just too much. All right, y'all. That's it for today. Thank y'all for hanging out for all the shenanigans. It is January the 16th, 2023. Day 316 of year four. Reading through the books of the Lord and the Prophets. Under the four-year consecutive day count. Day 1,335. We read... A little bit more of page seven and moved on to page eight in Romance of the Red Star, which is another name that Owaspi was published under. And then we hopped over here to De Delusions and Science and Spirituality by Susan B. Martinez in the, um, the reincarnation chapter entitled Reincarnation, Body Snatching for Karma, which is chapter seven. And it begins on page 284 in this book. So with that being said... Father, we thank you for the opportunity to do experiments and to see our flaws in the way that we perform the experiments. And we are able to see that if it doesn't work, that there's something wrong. Thank you for attention. Yeah, that's what I, what I was looking for. Thank you for the ability to see things in detail and to bring our attention to it. Attention to detail, right? It, it, it'll, it'll save your lives one day right and i'm just glad this was a, an experiment at home with a bowl of fruit loops i love y'all i'll see y'all back here tomorrow morning bright and early no 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 tomorrow morning 6 15 a.m eastern standard time peace